And everybody behind my voice, you are hearing the sound of Stream Beats. You can find Stream Beats over at streambeats.com and on all of the streaming music platforms uh, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. Uh, Stream Beats is music assembled, put together by Harris Heller, who is a gamer. He's uh, the person behind Alpha Gaming, uh, big streaming presence, and he has put this copyright free music together specifically for the use of streamers on their Twitch and their YouTube content. You won't get any copyright strikes when you're using Stream Beats. Also want to send a shout out to Mo over at the Tabletop Bellhop. Mo is the OG when it comes to all things tabletop games, board games, party games, you name it. He's got it. Industry news, ways to buy games, developers, and things that are coming out with uh, you know, coming up with new games, uh, and also uh, a whole galaxy of people that talk about games, either in podcasts or play games on streams or whatever. So go check out Mo at the tabletopbellhop.com. You will be glad that you did. And as the clock winds down, we're going to just mute this music, as lovely as it is, and we are going to go right into our show. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Monster Monday for May 17th, 2021. I am your host, DM Galabond, and tonight on Monster Monday, we are going to be talking about the Displacer Beast. Displacer Beast is a classic monster out of D&D that's just one of those like really weird things that you run into and people either think it's really cool or they think it's really weird or they think both. So tonight we're going to find a little bit about that, talk about uh, how you can use it in your games, uh, strategies if you're a player uh, if you face one of these things and also uh, some ways that you can make something a little bit unique uh, for your own homebrew campaigns all right so uh, this is the artwork and i always have to apologize for the artwork from the original monster manual um uh, this is the, uh, I guess I should say, this is the first edition Monster Manual uh, for where everything was line art, black and white, and wasn't rendered in very high quality. So if it gets enlarged, it looks a little bit, yeah, floopy. So this is a Displacer Beast from first edition. And a Displacer Beast looks like a large black panther with six legs and a pair of six-foot-long tentacles growing from its shoulders. It attacks with those tentacles, which have sharp, horn-like edges. Uh, and that is the description that's actually out of the... Uh, actually out of the Rule Cyclopedia, which is the collection of rules for the original D&D game, which preceded uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Then in AD&D, or first edition, the description uh, changed a little bit. This vaguely puma-like creature is bluish black. Its tentacles are dead black. The horny edges of the tentacles are brownish yellow, and its eyes glow a hellish green. So that was its description in the monster manual that this image comes from. And then in second edition... Uh, they told us the Displacer Beast has the blue-black color, blue coloring of a dark panther and a long cat-like body and head. Females range in length from 8 to 9 feet and weigh 450 pounds. Males are 10 to 12 feet long and weigh up to 500 pounds. They have six legs. Tentacles are tipped with rough horny edges that can inflict terrible wounds. And their eyes glow bright green even after death. 
So though that's some of the physical descriptions of the Displacer Beast throughout the editions. Well, now let's go and take a look, little bit of a look at the lore. Now, this image here, this is the 5th edition D&D image from D&D Beyond and the Monster Manual. All right, Displacer Beasts roamed the twilight lands of the Feywild for ages until they were captured and trained by the Unseely Court. The warriors of the court selectively bred the beasts to reinforce their ferocious and predatory nature, using them to hunt unicorns, pegasi, and other wondrous prey. However, it didn't take long for the Displacer Beasts to use their malevolent intelligence to escape their masters. Uh, that's lore about the monsters from 5th edition. Now, from 4th edition, it says, Displacer Beasts can be trained as attack beasts or guard animals, but they're prone to turning against their trainers. DMs, DMs, are you listening? Circle that, underline it, highlight it, and remember it. The first time one of your party members says, Oh, the kitty! I wonder if it has cubs. Can we raise one? You just sit behind your DM screen and go, yes, sure you can raise one. <laughs> because you know it's not going to be too long before that cute little cub grows up into something that's going to go, well, going to go feral on someone trying to train it. We're actually going to talk about that a little bit later when we talk about how to use these in your campaign. Now, Displacer Beasts favor small game, but will eat anything they can catch. They regard all other creatures as prey and tend to attack anything they meet. They have a deep-seated hatred of blink dogs, and the two attack each other ruthlessly when their paths cross. Now, that's the... Um, that's the description from 3rd edition. So you have, you have this, you know, we now get from the lore that they are from the Feywild. They can be trained to a certain point, And they come across a blink dog that's going to trigger them. And they're going to, they're going to get into a tussle with that blink dog. And, you know, I think the feeling is mutual between blink dogs, uh, or the feeling that blink dogs have about displacer beasts. So, um, you know, you're going to run into the same thing there. All right. So this image here is the image of the displacer beast from second edition. This is from the second edition monstrous manual. And now you see throughout this, throughout all of this, they keep their six legs. They keep these tentacles with the um, toothy pads uh, at the end of the tentacles that they use to attack uh, uh, creatures. And in 5th edition, uh, which is where we get the creature type, uh, since that's the current edition, the 5th edition, uh, this is a monstrosity. Uh, so monstrosities are monsters of strict sense, frightening creatures, and not ordinary, not truly natural, and almost never benign. Some of the results of magical experimentation gone awry. Others are products of terrible curses. They defy categorization and in some sense serve as a catch-all category for creatures that don't fit into any other type. Now, in this case, the Displacer Beast is more or less a natural, in quotation marks, a natural creature from the Feywild. Um, and if you think of... How does the Feywild fit into D and D cosmology? Feywild, the Feywild is kind of like the um, nature turned up on a scale of one to ten. It's nature turned up to a fifteen. Um, elves come. Elves have ancestry in the Feywild. Uh, the Greater Fey are there. Uh, you have all kinds of. Um, wild jungles and forests and that are populated by trees and fungi and bushes and everything that that are that move around and that are carnivorous all the creatures are you know have or a lot of the creatures i should say have like really weird uh capabilities like 
the the displacer beast uh, has this ability to sort of uh, you know bend light around itself so that it appears to be in a different location than it actually is. Uh, so those those are that's way to kind of think about the Feywild where this thing normally comes from. All right. Now we're going to get into looking at the mechanical features of the Displacer Beast throughout the editions of the game. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to turn over to uh, the Rule Cyclopedia that we talked about, where we got, saw our first description. This is the uh, you know comprehensive list of rules and creatures and everything for players and DMs from the original D&D game. So they have an armor class of four, six hit dice. They move 150 feet per round out of combat or 50, 50 feet per round in combat. They attack with their tentacles, uh, 2d4 each. Uh, they save as a six level fighter, uh, morale of eight, which is kind of medium good. They have a three intelligence. So in, in this in this game, they were imagined to be kind of just barely above animal intelligence. Um, Displacer beast skin bends light rays, so the creature always appears to be three feet from its actual position. So that. Uh, that means attackers incur a negative two penalty on attack rolls, and the creature gains a plus two bonus to the saving throws. And if the creature is severely damaged, it can use a ferocious bite, plus two to the attack roll, damage 1d6. And they're carnivores. They prey on smaller herd animals in forests and jungles. Sometimes stray into dungeons out of curiosity or because they smell something good. And they only attack PC parties when especially in. Uh, hungry. Now that is something from the uh, uh, something from that edition of the game. As you'll see, that bit of lore about them changes edition by edition. So displacer beasts hate and fear blink dogs will always attack them and anyone traveling with them. It's suspected that displacer beasts and blink dogs both come from some faraway plane of existence and are at war with other, one another throughout the dimensions. So now in original D&D was so old, they really didn't even have a concept of the Feywild as a separate plane. I mean, you know. They, they knew there were fairies and fey creatures and stuff like that, but I don't think they really had mapped out the cosmology uh, so much as to as to really give us any details about what the Feywild was like in that edition of the game. So now we'll go to the AD&D Monster Manual, and we've seen this picture before here. Uh, still armor class 4, 6 hit dice, and 2d4, uh, two attacks each with 2d4 damage each attack. Uh, and it tells us the pack of these monsters always contains only fully grown beasts. Uh, molecular vibrations of the displacer beast are such that it always appears to be three feet left, right, ahead, or behind from its actual position. Uh, so once again, very similar. You get a minus two penalty to hit them, and they have a plus two bonus on their saving throws. Now in second edition, uh, we come up. Uh, you know, you have the same armor class, same hit dice, same attacks, uh, pretty much. Uh, the combat, the displacer beast is a fierce, savage creature that hates all forms of life. Highly aggressive, the displacer beast will attack on sight, using its tentacles to inflict uh, 2d8 or, or 2d4 points of damage to its victims. Main advantage in combat is the magic power of displacement, which allows them to appear some three feet from their actual location. So again, you have the minus two to attack them and a plus two. Um, on their saving throws, uh, to determine the true position and uh, in its illusion, roll a 1d10, um, 1 to 5. It's in front, 6 to 7 to the left, 8 or 9 to the right, or 10 or behind. 
Um, although this ability is magical, the beast locations cannot be determined by dispel or detect magic. Only true seeing will reveal its position. So they will not use their claws or teeth unless near death. And then they are carnivores. Unless raising young, they usually run in packs, carving a savage swath of destruction. So now back in the in the old D and D, they told us that they will only attack parties um, that you know appear to be relatively weak. Not so. In this edition, they just they just will. Uh, will attack everything. They hate all life and will sometimes kill purely for pleasure. Uh, so Displacer Beasts mate in the autumn and the young are born in the spring. Uh, that's good because if you have, you know, any kind of magical creature like that, just as in the real world, there's always some rich idiot in uh you know a king or uh very powerful merchants or nobles or something like that that wants exotic pets and they might hire adventurers to go out and get them a baby whatever bring me a griffin egg bring me a displacer beast cub bring me some so that i can have an exotic pet and i can pet him and love him and call him george uh, or whatever I forget what that what that bit was in Looney Tunes. Um, so they are, um, you know, so they're naturally vicious to most and almost evil at times. They harbor an undying hatred of blink dogs. Uh, so you get you get some of these uh, you get some of these uh, things about the ecology society and history of the monster in each different edition of the game and so if you're putting together you know a dossier for your game and if you're the kind of dm that wants to know all about the monsters having access to these old editions really helps you put together um and oftentimes you have to pick and choose which bits you want because some of them are contradictory uh, so the, there's an antipathy in temperaments between the lawful good, uh, lawful good blink dogs and the displacer beasts. And uh, the two abilities, you know, other people say the displacement and blink abilities uh, aggravate both the animals and cause them to have hostile reactions to each other. Um, and displacer beasts have little to fear from other large predators, say perhaps trolls or giants. Uh, some wizards and alchemists value their hides for use in certain magical uh, preparations and will offer generous rewards for them. The eyes of a displacer beast are highly prized of uncommon good luck charms among thieves who believe they will protect the bearer from detection. Okay. Um, in third edition... The Displacer Beast looks like an emaciated panther with blue-black fur, six legs, body that's nothing but muscle and bone, a pair of tentacles sprout from its shoulders, and in and horny ridged pads. The Displacer Beast is a savage and stealthy carnivore that resembles a puma in some respects. And now here it says... Um, a displacer beast the size of a Bengal tiger, about nine feet long and weighing about 500 pounds, and that they speak common. So notice here that they have gained an intelligence now of five, so just barely able to speak. So you can actually uh, decide if you want to in your game that a displacer beast has the ability to speak. Hmm. Well, uh, some people will swear, and if you go on YouTube videos, which are always, always 100% honestly shot, and are never edited, and never doctored, and never manipulated in any way, but you will have people swear that 
their cats literally can say words, English words. Um, not many of them, but people will have their videos of, of cats, in air quotes, talking. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's possible that a displacer beast has the uh, mouth parts and is able to articulate its tongue in such a way that it can produce common speech. That's up to you to decide uh, how how it would sound and how well it speaks, what its what its grammar is like. Now, in um, in third edition, we get introduced to two different kinds of displacer beasts. There is the displacer beast, large magical beast, and there's the displacer beast pack lord, which is a huge magical beast. Well, what's the difference? The difference is 51 hit points for the normal Displacer Beast and 203 hit points for the Pack Lord. So about four times, about four times as tough. And, um, you know, uh, huge. I think large takes up, uh, large takes up a 10 by 10 square. Huge takes up a 15 by 15 um, square. In uh, on a you know on a battle map. Um, also, a huge difference in the base attack and grapple. So the base attack is plus six for the displacer beast or plus eighteen for the pack lord. Uh, full attack uh, is tentacles with plus nine and bite plus four uh, for the pack lord. Tentacles at plus 25 and bite at plus 19. So they both have dark vision, low light vision, resistance to ranged attacks. Uh, they gain the alertness, stodge, and, and stealthy feats. Uh, but the Pack Lord has a whole bunch of other feats as well. And uh, it's a difference between a challenge rating of 4 and a challenge rating of 12. So you you could say that they are uh, they're pretty much uh, the pack lords are are much larger much tougher versions of the displacer beast. Now, due to the bizarre nature of their anatomy, displacer beasts are unusually unusually likely to produce mutant offspring. These whelps can grow to a tremendous size, reaching a length of 20 feet and standing almost 10 feet high at the shoulder. Pack lords, as these gigantic displacer beasts are known, frequently lead bands of their smaller fellows. Except for their freakish size and strength, pack lords resemble normal displacer beasts. Okay, so that's what we get from 3rd edition. Now, from 4th edition... Uh, Displacer Beast. It's veiled by an illusion. It makes pinpointing its true location difficult. Native to the Feywild, they also reside in tangled forests and dark caverns of the natural world. And Displacer Beast is a level 9 skirmisher. Has 97 hit points or bloodied value of 48. AC of 23. Uh, the tentacle attacks is... Uh, plus 13 versus AC with 1D, 1D6 plus 4 damage. Um, Beast Fury requires combat advantage, makes two tentacle attacks and a bite. Um, and then all melee and ranged attacks have 50% chance to miss a Displacer Beast. Uh, the effect ends when a Displacer Beast is hit by an attack but recharges as soon as the Displacer Beast moves two or more squares on its turn. Uh, threatening Reach. Displacer Beast can make opponent attacks against all enemies within its reach, which is two squares or ten feet. And then the Pack Lord is a level 13 skirmisher with 258 hit points and a bloody value of 124, AC of 27. Um, so now it gets Reach 3, so it's a 15 foot reach instead of a 10 foot reach with its attacks. And other than the other than the size, it's got the nimble stride, so it ignores difficult terrain and speed penalties for squeezing. Uh, superior shifting, free when an attack misses the displacer beast because of its 
displacement, and it makes a melee basic attack and shifts one square. So it gets like a free reaction, basically. Anytime you attack it, miss, it gets to attack you or somebody close by within range. And this is the uh, image of the Displacer Beast in 4E. And now we come to our 5th edition Displacer Beast. Uh, so now notice in 5E, the Displacer Beast protect, projects a magical illusion, makes it appear to be standing near its actual location. But once again, now we saw in older editions, it doesn't really say anything here in 5e, but we can infer from the old editions that you would need something like true seeing to actually see where the displacer beast is. But it also retains that caveat from 4e that once you hit it, that magic gets disrupted until the end of the... Uh, Displacer Beast next turn. And so if Bob the Barbarian hits it and everybody else misses, then when the um, Displacer Beast comes around and gets its turn, at the end of its turn, uh, it it uh, goes back and it's it has that um, displacement field again until somebody hits it again. All right, um, and we talked a little bit about its unseely origins. We also have noted that they get increasingly more bloodthirsty. So um, love of the kill, displacer beasts kill not only for food but for sport. They target prey even when not hungry, often toying with their victims to entertain themselves until they're ready to eat. Uh, after killing its prey using tentacles, the Displacer Beast drags the corpse to a quiet place where it can feed without distraction. And they hunt alone or in small prides that demonstrate skill at setting ambushes. DMs, again, take note. Ambushes. Uh, prized guards and pets. Intelligent evil creatures favor Displacer Beast as pets, but a Displacer Beast enters such an alliance only if it appears beneficial. A Displacer Beast might guard a vault or act as a bodyguard for a prominent individual. Now, notice something about the uh, intelligence. In 5th edition, it's gained more intelligence. So now it has an intelligence of 6, which is greater than what it had in 3rd edition, but it does not have any language skills. So... You, um, in 5e, it doesn't have language. Now, that's by the book. As a DM, you are free to say, well, if it said that with a 5 intelligence it can talk, then with a 6 intelligence, maybe, maybe in your game it can talk. And uh, so there you go. All right. Let's go ahead and switch back over here, and we'll take a look at some more information about the Displacer Beast. So, how might you use a Displacer Beast in an encounter? Uh, I always look at how can I make a hard or challenging encounter with these creatures for a party of five PCs by level. And again, we always look at the stat block from 5th edition. So 5th edition, at level 1, it's a hard encounter. And it's just beyond the, th the threshold of a deadly encounter. So I found that with most parties, unless people are completely raw and totally green, you can throw a, a hard encounter at them and they can get through it relatively easily. If you throw something that's just beyond deadly, well, you might put a little bit of fear in them by knocking one of them unconscious or something like that during the fight. So, yeah, be that as it may. Now, once your party moves up to level 2, a single displacer beast becomes merely a medium encounter. If you want to make it a hard encounter, you can add one young Kuthric. And at level 3 and 4, 
um, they become, I'm sorry, that shouldn't be hard. That should be an easy encounter at level three and four. And to make it a hard encounter at uh, level four, you can add one more Displacer Beast to change it from an easy encounter to a hard encounter. Okay, now if you are a player and you run into, you and your party run into a Displacer Beast, uh, in fifth edition, those tentacles have 10 have a 10 foot reach and they gain advantage on saving throws and impose disadvantage on attackers due to their displacement effect so and you know as in all the additions that makes the monster look like it's in a different location where the monster is actually actually is so this effect can be nullified when the monster is hit by an attack so a good tactic might be and notice it has to be an attack roll so it's not when it's hit, not when it's damaged. So throwing an area of effect spell in there that's just going to affect everything in the area, that doesn't work. You have to actually target it with an attack. So the most efficient way of being able to nullify that is to take your melee characters that have the highest uh, hit bonus, the highest attack bonus, put them up close to the monster, because uh, that can sort of nullify the attack for a bit and then allow your ranged attackers from far back to um, not have that disadvantage when they're trying to um, trying to shoot at it. So now if we flip that over and we go behind the DM screen, how might you use the Displacer Beast? Well, we know they're cunning predators. They hunt for the love of the kill as much as they hunt for food. So you can deploy this when you keep that in mind when you deploy the monster and let the displacer beast uh, use any kind of natural advantage that they can find, such as uh, ambush tactics. If there's a way they can attack from above their prey, you know, like jumping down on their prey or something, or they might even. Uh, stalk their prey for an elongated period of time for hours in game or maybe even as much as a day in game um, until they figure out you know where they can find uh, somebody and catch them unawares uh, and then try to attack them so because the displacer beasts have above average intelligence or above, above animal intelligence uh, they would you should also let them choose to flee an encounter if the party seems to be an overwhelming adversary. All right. Uh, now, where would you put these in a campaign? So on their own, a displacer beast is an adversary for early tier one party. But if you're that kind of DM, you could give the beast some young and let the PCs with good handling, an, animal handling scores or your druids and rangers try to raise the cubs and train them. However, you should keep in mind that these are wild beasts and they are cunning and they don't like being told what to do. So going to a real world and kind of a sad example, uh, some people would say it's sad, some people would not, but uh, using the example of Siegfried and Roy, the very famous entertainers from uh, Las Vegas, uh they they spent decades uh working with wild cats uh and when i say cats i mean like tigers and lions and stuff like that and they would get these cats as cubs and they would raise them and they would train them and they would do these shows with them uh in las vegas uh, at their you know at the the hotel where they were uh, they were the basically the headliner act every night and in a um, I think it was in a practice I don't think it was at an actual show but you know one of these tigers that they had worked with for years for five six seven years the tiger just suddenly something just snapped and it went feral and it hauled off and it just literally cr uh, clawed the face off of one of these guys because uh, you know if you've ever seen a, ti a tiger's paw up close it's 
It's like bigger than a grown man's two hands put together. And huge claws. And when that thing decides it's going to go feral, it just it's going to be bad news for anybody that's in there. So keep that as a guide. And always give the Displacer Beast cub, and especially as it gets older, give it a chance. Uh, and that chance can vary on circumstances that some natural instinct will kick in at some point and they will turn on their trainers and attack the PCs at an inopportune moment. moment. So um, that could be like when there's a stressful situation or it could be in response to like a loud noise or heaven forbid your party has a displacer beast and you go up against somebody who has a blink dog <laughs> then the displacer beast is just like, like ah, go crazy and start attacking the party um, as well as attacking the blink dog so uh that would be um that would be a thing that you can use and and base that on the real life example of you know wild creatures that hey they're gonna be wild creatures every now and then uh now how could we reskin the monster uh we've seen throughout the editions that it uh, displacer beasts are natives of the fey wild so they have some fey qualities and as we said before think of the fey as extra natural but now imagine a variant of the displacer beast that is native to the astral plane or the ethereal plane and furthermore say that its tentacle attacks can grapple a victim and transport them along with the creature to its native plane so you could have now if you find a cub of such a creature and you raise that as a party you could eventually train that creature uh, to basically grapple and then shift one pc at a time or the entire party one at a time to a different plane if it is tamed or if it's an enemy that you meet, it might just go and, you know, come out of the ethereal, attack one of the party members, grapple it, and take that party member to the ethereal plane or the astral plane, and then force it to fight one-on-one -on -one there against the monster. Uh, now, that, that would be a really good way to piss off your players if you did that to them. So... I'd be careful that you don't that you don't use that unless the party is at a level where an individual party member would stand a good chance against a displacer beast and you can use the tools like Kobold Fight Club and things like that to figure out what a, an appropriate challenge rating for a monster is for one PC of a of a certain level. Uh, but if you do that and you you know let's say you attack bob the barbarian and you drag him to the ethereal plane and he manages to slay the displacer beast well now bob the barbarian is stuck in the ethereal plane so that could be a whole new adventure of okay guys how do we go find bob where did he go and how do we get him back and yeah, you know, so that that could be a a thing. Like if you want the party to travel to different planes, that could be like an interesting way of figuring out how such how such a thing could be done. And you might decide in your game that oh, okay, well that that displacement to another plane is temporary, and like after an hour, the person just pops back to their native plane um you know and uh that would be you know, that would be that but then they might meet a high level wizard friend who's like oh you ran into a creature that can do that well go go hunt down some of those i might be able to figure out how we can brew a potion or make a spell or do something that's going to help us uh travel to this other plane 
So, you know, you can you can sort of use that as a gateway or an entree or sort of a preview of uh, things in another can or later in your campaign that you want to do with the players. All right, so let's take a look at the chat. I see we have uh, hey Amish. Uh, Ah, okay. All right. So, uh, Amish is just reminding us that the Siegfried and Roy event happened in Houston at a show. Oh, and it's startled by something in the audience. I was trying to protect the trainer. Um, uh, yes, but its idea of protecting the trainer because it's a huge cat, um, uh, wound up doing more harm than good. All right, so I don't think we have any other questions about the Displacer Beast. Um, oh, Houston is the thing in the news recently. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you for that clarification. All right, well, uh, we're going to go ahead into the wrap-up, uh, and I'll double-check the chat to see if there's any other questions. I have been DM Galabond. This has been Monster Monday, and tonight we've been looking at the Displacer Beast. Uh, it's one of those classic monsters that's been around forever, um, but uh, it's got some unusual qualities and makes it kind of a fun thing that you can throw. And especially, especially if you have newer players that have never played D and D, it's a nice low-level monster you can throw at a party that makes them go, "Ooh, you know, <laughs> what kind of game are we playing here?" Um, you can find us most weeks. You can find us four times a week here on Twitch. Uh, here for Monster Monday, my other shows, normally we have Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Walker of Waterdeep. That's a planeswalking 5e D&D game. Then on Thursday night, Sword Coast Chronicles, that's also a 5e D&D game. But this is a kind of a love letter to the published 5th edition uh, campaigns right now. We're in the storyline of Curse of Strahd. And then on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., we have just launched our Saturday Night Greyhawk campaign. Um, they have reached the old moat house because, yes, we are doing a – we are running through the original Temple of Elemental Evil using 2E rules. And this is kind of a fun, fun, fun game. Uh, everybody's having a good time with it. All right. Uh, again, yes. Uh, again, uh, I have been DM Galabond. You can find all of the live shows here on Twitch. You can find archives of all of the live shows over on the YouTube channel. And if you want to help out with uh, allowing us to do more stuff and create more content we do have a patreon over at uh, patreon.com slash dm galabund all right well that is going to do it uh, i really thank you guys for coming and hanging out amish thank you for your contributions to the show this evening uh, that's much appreciated and um we are going to go ahead into the uh end credits and then I am going to go over on go over on Twitch and try to find if anybody from Game Rebel is running um, anything, running a fun game tonight, and see what they are doing. And then let's go. Okay, go to this channel and All right, come on, come on. All right. Uh, do do do. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, so B Delivery. B Delivery is playing Stardew Valley. That's something completely different in D&D. So let's go ahead and check out what um, B Delivery is up to tonight. All right, thank you guys so much. We're going to raid her. And we will... Oh, started your session zero one, but it was cut short. Oh, okay. Well, Amish, uh, good luck. I hope it will. Hope your game will uh, will take off and be good. Take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Good night now.